Well, here I am, back in the beautiful garden of Ireland, County Wicklow. And I think maybe you might just recognise that house behind me. That's Collie Ennis's house. Collie, Ireland's favourite herpetologist. I've dropped down today to have a chat with him because he's going to introduce my friend John Kybert to the art of building ponds. Now, I know John is already here. In fact, I can sort of hear the two of them in the, in the background chatting away. So they can't be too far away from me. So let's just walk up, have a look and see what they're at. Yes, just like I said, there are the pair of them standing at the door waiting for me. Now, I know the reason John is here today is because he's going to get advice from Collie on how to build ponds. Morning, gentlemen. Morning, how Morning, are you? Okay, so I know you two are chatting about ponds. You were, actually. Oh, you were, <laughs> were you? How surprising. Listen, Holly, I thing. know that you're the expert on this, and John is here to take advice, and I know nothing. So that's a great help. Why don't we go down to the one in your garden here, and just explain a little bit about the process of how you built that one, and what you intend to do, because I know that John has a plan to build these ponds beside all of the little forests, the stepping stone forests that are already prepared in the schools around Tala. So what do you say we walk down and have a look at your one here? Sounds fantastic. Okay, so here's the pond in Collie's garden. Yeah, so obviously this is a lot bigger than the ones we intend to put in. This is a, a, a fairly large wildlife pond, but the process is the same. So it's basically a bowl shape in the ground, um, if, if you're going for this type of one. Um, because we're going to be putting them in near schools, it'll be fairly shallow. Right right up to the edge mainly shallow and then a, a slightly deeper portion in the middle about two and a half foot deep and that allows animals to hi hibernate over winter you then put in some liner to block the sharp stones around the edge once you have that bowl shape dug out so you put in and we'll, uh, we'll get the kids to do that themselves yeah, That's yeah. the more they do the better yeah yeah um once you have that shape then you get either a bit of old carpet liner you can get professional liner you can use cardboard anything just to soften the edge yeah uh, sand is great as well and then you get your your plastic liner or your rubber liner and put that on fill it with water then around the edges just put in some rocks some moss some wood and bob's your uncle that's basically it and then you just wait for the for the little creepy crawlies to show up and if you build it they will come yeah kind of exactly stuff. it's such a quick process you get it in over the winter ideally so we should be doing it in the next couple of weeks and then instantly in this throughout the spring and the summer you're just going to see it dry in, in life and, and there was nothing here this wasn't the, this wasn't a water feature at all this wasn't a water feature to uh, uh so it's four months in now wow it looks like it's been here years yeah so it just goes to show once you put it in and let it settle it just it takes over and so yeah it's amazing. And there's already frogs and newts and Really? All sorts of stuff to use. They just, oh, find, yeah. they just find a way there. Really straight away, it was a couple of weeks. Um, so it's, it, they're just fantastic. And the great thing is you're combining with your brilliant initiative with the Stepping Stone Forest. What we're doing there is we're creating a mosaic of habitats. So habitat is great. Yeah. Forests are great. Wetlands are great. Scrub is great. But com combining them yeah. is fantastic because yeah. then you're bringing, you're making edges and animals love edges, they love kind of being able to move from one place to another so your forest will provide habitat for bats but also the ponds beside them will provide food for them in midges yeah. and stuff like that yeah. so you know it's um, yeah it should be a really really good uh, they complement each other really yeah, exactly. well exactly and it should be a really good success story uh, to, to, to as you say complement the fantastic work users are already doing with the planting of the forest and it's uh how how quickly i mean is it is it done in one one session you just do you dig it out you put in your liner yeah obviously i was digging the same yeah, no, old, so that took a long time but, but for the, for the school well, i'm going to show you a pond up further up there um which would be about the same size as what okay. we, what we do and see, it yeah. literally is done in a day yeah it literally is so okay. it, it, it's fantastic you know it, it's, it's a great project for the kids to be it's involved brilliant in. it's brilliant and the great thing about it is if you show them and this way I don't physically want to be digging the pond 
and partly because I'm very old. <laughs> but uh, uh, no, it's you want them to do it because they'll get that skill set and bring it home. Yeah. And ask yeah. mom and dad, can I get a pond in my garden? Yeah. And you know, it's a, it's a great it's a great way of educating through a bit of uh, uh, educating about conservation with a bit of fun. Yeah. You know? Yeah. It was it was interesting because in one of the first schools that we were working on, one of the kids was having a fun with rake. And I said, oh, that, you know, the, the enjoyment that they get from a, a rake. Yeah. And the, the teacher explained, said, they live in a car apartment complex. They would have no interaction with anybody yeah. that has a rake. Would never have there seen a rake before. Wouldn't know what it's for. So they Yeah, so John, this is this is the scale you'll be talking about for um, places like schools or uh, scout dens or even even uh, a small urban back garden. If, if you have a, a, you know, what is it? A, a meter and a half square maybe yeah uh, to, to to put aside um i've done this one lengthways um so it's longer it's it's not that deep it's only you know you know it's only it's only a deep yeah so nobody's gonna drown in it yeah. <laughs> it's yeah. um and 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 that's it i mean this is going to be used this is going to be packed full of frog spawn in three or four months because all the frogs are going to use it. Our, our species of frog love these shallow, leafy ponds, if you know what I mean, full yeah. of full of aquatic vegetation, grass and stuff places like that. Places to hide. Yeah, places to hide. Exactly, exactly that. Um, and 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 it's uh, it's a very simple process. And that went in as you were, we were talking earlier on. That went in a day. Went in about three hours, actually. Believe it or not. And that that won't ev evaporate during the summer. It, it, the go water down. level will drop a little bit, but it won't go because if you just look, I left a little bit bare, bare there, you can still yeah. see the liner. Yeah. So the liner will keep water in it. Nice. Um, and again, the fact that it will get warm will make it more attractive to the likes of frogs because they want their tadpoles to be in a nice warm um, okay. in a pond that will uh, help it grow faster. Okay. So yeah. So there you go. I mean, it's a uh, it's a it's a simple process. And very manageable and yeah most of the schools that i've been in now they could easily accommodate a of course like this, yeah you, know, you put it easily the, and like even if you haven't got a wildlife garden or whatever most schools will have a playing pitch or somewhere like that i did one in drimna castle there last year and they have it down behind the the gaa pitch um and right beside it there's a lot of nettles and you know where they yeah. where the lawnmower can't get in that kind of thing yeah. so again it's complementing that area and you know uh that's actually where I got my interest in all this like frogs and stuff was when I was in school in Drimna Castle oh, right. and they always had frogs there and then the, apparently the frogs disappeared over the years so uh, they're back now because okay. <laughs> so I was determined to get them back in there. Right. You know that they, they, they were creating these forests in a horseshoe shape in most cases okay that's to provide an outdoor classroom so that they'd be protected from the oh, wind wow. all the way around and in the primary schools we're going to put a tunnel entrance into a willow just that I was just mentioning uh, and we'll, we'll, we'll arch it and so they'll walk through this into That's this fantastic. kind of forest wonderland now would it be better to have that in the forest classroom with them or on the outside of the forest what do you think um i would put it on the outside um, because you want to get a little bit of natural sunlight on it and um, if it's in the middle of trees yeah it will. can still work but you do need to get some dappled light into it um, okay and during the summer when the trees are, are full of um leaves and stuff it, it, it will block it out so you want some sunlight you don't want it in full sun it's uh, very much goldilocks yeah, yeah, you yeah, want yeah. a little bit of sun during the day uh, if it's in full sun the whole time you'll get al algal blooms it still work yeah it would still work in the forest but just because we're, we're, we're trying to make it as as best as possible yeah. you know 50 50 sun during the day and uh, probably better out, outside Another thing then during the winter is, and you see it in some of my smaller ponds that we're walking up there, they do get clogged up with leaves if they're in a forested area. Right. So right. you have to kind of keep an eye on that. And there's more management involved in it. Um, if we can keep the management levels down to uh, as minimum, minimum as possible. Yeah. So yeah. just outside, I think would be perfect. Okay, okay, that's good. But I mean, you'll, you'll uh, clearly you'll be on site each yeah. time. So you'll be able to say, that's the best that's location the best place, for yeah. it. Yeah, yeah. That's All what right. I think is the best thing. You just go down, say, this is where we're going. You peg out the uh, the area and you say how deep you want to go and you hand the kids a shovel and the teacher a shovel and, and come back down for the liner to be put down. This is what we did in, in Drimna Castle that was quite successful and um, yeah, they did a great job, fantastic yeah. job and you know, great interest there as well. So, Yeah, and while it's complimentary, 
It doesn't have to be done at the same time as the first. We, you can hit this oh, at the time that suits yeah, you. Yeah, anytime. Yeah, okay. Be best, as I said, if we can get it in in the next, like, before <clears throat> the end of January and start of February. I mean, so we have a good, they have a good bit of time to do it. So, yeah, 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 you know, yeah, absolutely. Um, but you can do it any time of the year. It's just, um, it's it's easy to do it any time of the year. It's just it, around just before springtime is is ideal. Yeah, you're likely to get spawned yeah. then. And it's year. the same if you have a pond in your garden. Now's the time to manage it because now's the time when there's not that much wildlife activity in it. So if you're if you're raking, if pulling out leaves, don't use a rake in a pond. If you're yeah. pulling out leaves, <laughs> if you're using, uh, if you're giving it a haircut with the vegetation around it, like irises and lilies or anything like that, now's the time to do it. Uh, you you just chop around what you need to clear out. You pull out the the leaves, but you leave them for a couple of nights beside the pond. That allows anything that's in there to be pulled before, out yeah. to crawl back in. Yeah, yeah, it's, yeah. It's, a, it's a good system, and then you can take it away and compost it. So. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> So that's what I'll be doing now in the next yeah. while. All right. you sleep. You're going to be busy? Yeah, I'm, I'm always busy. <laughs> John, when do you plan on doing the first one of these? School that's volunteered to take the pond is a little bit further down the planting scale because oh, okay, you've got to yeah. allow the time for the, the soil preparation to do its job. Um, so it will be going into, it'll be Fur House Community School and we'll be going in there probably we'll, we'll try and get in as soon as we can next couple really. of weeks hopefully yeah um, okay and maybe our so that means you're going to put the pond in first yeah yeah yeah, yeah. okay yeah. yeah but the the area for the forest is clearly marked out so there's no issue there we yeah. can go around that and she's very enthusiastic absolutely. i mean i met yeah. her yeah. i saw yeah. the enthusiasm yeah absolutely okay oh, they're fantastic it's just a, an instant window into uh into the natural world as i said they'll they're just they just uh sparks that interest in kids i think they're just a, a fantastic little resource and handy to do yeah so at that stage collie then you'll um explain the whole process mm -hmm. i know you're not going to have to do it on every single one of them but on the first one mm -hmm. you'll go through the whole process step yeah, by yeah. step and i'll be there obviously to film it yeah exactly. so that all of the schools can watch this exactly. and know exactly what they need to do yeah, yeah. well thanks again for watching wildlife wednesday folks I hope you enjoyed this week's episode, and if you did, I'd be grateful if you'd give it a like and subscribe to my channel. And when you do, don't forget to ring the bell so you're notified every time I upload new content. If you'd like to buy a copy of my safari book from sunrise to sunset, just follow the link below the video. Till next week, stay safe, stay healthy, wash your hands and wear a mask where necessary while continuing to maintain social distancing because we're not quite out of the woods yet even me <laughs> take care folks bye